What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Sanchez405 coming at you. It's on the warpath. If you're new to the channel, hey, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you get notifications every time uh, there's new content posted on the channel. And for everybody returning, you know how we do. Like, comment, tell me what you're thinking about the video. Because y'all know today it is part nine of the Who Is series. We're wrapping up the offensive side of the ball with. The offensive line coach, his name's John Matsko, and this guy has a proven track record, has a great resume of developing offensive lines, getting running games to hit a thousand yards and all that good stuff. So let's dive in to the Kent State graduate, John Matsko. And John Matsko started out 74 coaching after he was done playing fullback at Kent State, uh, went to Miami of Ohio as a, a GA, and he spent time at UNC, the Naval Academy, Arizona, USC, and there he was either an offensive line coach or an offensive coordinator throughout his tenure in the college ranks. He was actually a head coach uh, at Danbury High uh, back in the 70s as well. In 92, he had his opportunity to finally bust through two the NFL. And with that, he joined one of the greatest offensive line minds in the history. Yes, I'm going to say the history of the National Football League. When Boss Hogg himself, Joe Bugle, moved over to Phoenix as the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, excuse me, as the Phoenix Cardinals, excuse me. Um, and he, he hired John Matsko to be the offensive line coach. And how did John Matsko re, uh, respond? For the first time since Stump Mitchell did it in 1985, they had a thousand yard rusher in 1993 uh, in Ronald Moore. So you think about that. How many times? They were in St. Louis the last time they had a thousand yard rusher. So the first time when they were in the city of Phoenix and the state of Arizona, John Matsko helped develop an offensive line that paved the way for a thousand yard rusher in Arizona, the very first one. Uh, whether it's Phoenix, Arizona, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then after that, he moved over to New Orleans, worked with another head coach there uh, that had a good track record in the NFL in Jim Mora and worked with this guy, may or may not know him, his name Willie Rolfe, three Pro Bowls under Matsko. They also uh, were third in the league in fewest sacks given up and like I said, Willie Rolfe, he's a Hall of Famer. So that's one right there. There's a common trend y'all are going to see here in a second, though. Then he moved over with um, with Jim Fossil. So he, he goes to another, from one gym to another. According to Jim in New York, uh, he worked with the Giants, worked uh, to pave the way for Tiki Barber in that uh, with that offensive line. They were seventh in rushing in 1997. And uh, after the 98 season, he moved over to Greener Pastures. Or golden, blue and golden. He went to St. Louis, worked with Dick Vermeil in his final season. Y'all know what Dick Vermeil did in his final season, right? That's right, they won a Super Bowl. He was the offensive line coach behind the greatest show on turf that led the league in offense in uh, from 1999 to 2001. Y'all talk about Mike March, Mike March being the, uh, being that offensive mind. Hey, John Matsko. If Kurt Warner wasn't protected, if Marshall Falk didn't have them holes, hey, they probably wouldn't have been the great show on, on turf. They might have been the okay show on turf. But Matsko worked with Orlando Pace, another Hall of Famer, another one, in the words of DJ Khaled. And then you had Adam Timmerman, who played very well in the NFL, had a couple of Pro Bowls, uh, to his credit. So... You see the uh, you seeing the theme here, right? So after the 2005 season, after Mike Marks was fired, after he was the head coach, he moved over to Kansas City with Herm Edwards being the head coach there. In 2006, his offensive line led the way for Larry Johnson in the ninth rushing attack into the National Football League. They had 11 games of 100 or more rushing yards that season, which was a team record. I still think it is a team record today. Worked with Will Schiltz, another Hall of Famer, and Brian Waters, who probably should be a Hall of Famer uh, later on in life. And then after the 07 season, he moved on there. He, kind of sporadic there for a little bit, but then moved on to join rookie head coach John Harbaugh in the Queen City, excuse me, in Charm City in Baltimore. Uh, as their offensive line coach, and, and they ranked in the top five in rushing attack. So, 
hey, I think we, we've got a guy who know what he wants to do. Um, work, and then in uh, 2011, he worked in Carolina. He, Ron Rivera called him to be his offensive line coach. He's worked with Ryan Khalil, who was an All-Pro in 15 when they had that record set. Another thing. Like I said, offensive lines. If you don't, if you ain't got the offensive line, you ain't got nothing. And uh, worked with Trey Turner as well, who had a Pro Bowl. Um, the, uh, interesting stat about this running game because of this offensive line, from week six of the 2014 season all the way to week three of the 16 season. That's 30 consecutive games. The Carolina Panthers offense produced 100 or more yards of rushing in each of those contests. Uh, that That's crazy to think about that. Um, he worked with Andrew Norwell, who's an All-Pro as well. Uh, Darrell Williams was a second-team All-Pro. And Trey Turner, he's made a couple of Pro Bowls there as well. Uh, he will work with an assistant coach in uh, Travell Wharton. Well, Matt's go who is uh, a 10-year veteran of the National Football League, spent nine years in Carolina. I think he actually played for Matt Sco for a couple of years and worked at South Carolina as their offensive co uh, offensive line coach and then most recently with the Carolina Panthers as their assistant offensive line coach. So he's learning from the best. A star-studded record for uh, resume for John Matsko, three Hall of Famers to that credit, whether they were in the early stages of their career or in the twilight of their careers, helping develop these fellas into the uh, offensive linemen, the, the gold standard in, in the National Football League history. So we know it's a big mess on the O-line from, I mean, you, you've probably got a question at right tackle, Morgan Moses, just it, maybe he can help solve the yips or the Tourette's that Morgan Moses has. Brandon Sheriff, um, can he stay healthy? Because if he is, I think he can take, uh, he can help take Sheriff's game to the next level. Chase Rule, he's going to be in there. You know, he's going to look to get paid, so I think he's going to be all right at the center spot. Then you've got questions on that left side. The left side of the, uh, of the line, and, you know, who's going to be at the guard spot? You've got West Squared working there in Schweitzer and Martin. Uh, Martin had a good uh, perform well down the stretch uh, when um, on the right side of the ball when um, Sheriff was out. And then also you have the left tackle. And you bring in Cornelius Lucas. You also have uh, Jerron Christian there. And then you drafted this year, you drafted Sadiq Charles. So there, those are a lot of questions to be answered there uh, on that left tackle spot. Who's going to be? Because, like I just said, if you ain't got an offensive line, you ain't got nothing. No, Dwayne Haskins can't function. Function, excuse me. Um, and uh, there is guys, Adrian Peterson. They're not going to be able to hit, hit the holes like they want to, or, or whoever it is. Bryce Love. The, it all begins and ends with the offensive line. And I think John Matsko, I say this about these coaches, the one thing I have noticed about this offensive side of the ball, and you're going to see in the defense side of the ball, these guys are teachers, and they've got experience. They have a lot of experience in working with players and developing them. And John Matsko, the oldest coach on the roster of the coaching staff, uh, is – it is it follows the fit and, and we'll see how he does here. But tell me what y'all think. What do you think about John Matsko? I like it. I know y'all keep on being like Sanchez, you always saying you like it. But I do like it. I really do. It's like I'm going Golden Corral and I see all these different I, I see the, the carvery station and I'm like, oh Lord. Oh, oh they got steak, they've got prime rib. It, I mean it it's all good. Doesn't matter what cut it is, it's still tasting good, y'all. Tell me what you think. I'm saying Charles 405. I love you guys. Appreciate the support as always. And what do I say here? And when I close out, love, peace, and hell. I'll be talking to you real soon. I'm out, y'all.